your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bob Morton is our guest, and our Amazon purchase of the show is at Mark McD4. Mark McDonough, I guess is how you would say his real name. Uh, JJ, I went to jmore.com, I clicked the Amazon link, and I bought the book about Youngstown's Boom Boom Mancini. Uh, he bought The Good Son by Mark Kriegel, the book about Ray Mancini. Ray Mancini was here promoting that very book. And there you have it, Mark McDonough. Thanks for coming, Morty, my man. My pleasure, Jay, to see your garage. <laughs> you just, saw the baby. Just, oh, the baby's adorable. Very cute baby. Is that right? But looking at your life in this garage, it's great. It's, what? Great it's not a man cave by any stretch. Hold your mic closer to your mouth. Huh? No, it's not a man cave. It's I always not... feel like guys that have man caves, it, it's, a weird procl- it's a weird thing that you have to announce to me. Like, you've got to check out my man cave. And the man cave's usually... A garage with a double bunch doors. Of shit in yeah. it, but it's yeah, like you're, awesome. you're letting me know you've been hoarded out of your own house by your wife. <laughs> that's what man cave. That's secret that's, code for this is all I yeah, have. You're fucked. You're in trouble. This is all I have. This room with a fucking Ravens jersey, yeah, the Chris cool. McAllister jersey from 2001. So this is all I got. And I Sinatra, come out here and she doesn't talk to me. And the Sinatra pictures. Yeah, we got the Sinatra. I love that. We got the rabbit. Did you ever, did you ever meet him? I never met Sinatra. You? Oh, yeah. Tell us, Bob Morton. Oh, yeah. Bob Morton, by the way, how many Emmy nominations? Uh, 11. And that's for David Letterman? David Letterman, John Leguizamo. What was John? Uh, what did you do with Freak. Them? The special Freak. Remember that? Was it a, yeah, it was an HBO. HBO. Yeah. Yeah. So how many? He won were, an Emmy for it. I did not. You were the executive producer of the David Letterman show for how long? Uh, I was the, I was with him for 14 years. I ran the show for nine of the 14. So for the listeners that go old school Letterman, 1230 Letterman like me in high school, staying up late to catch it because it was subversive and underground, every time Letterman looked over to the side and said, how are we doing on time, Morty? This is the fucking guy, dude. It's Morty. This is me. It's Morty. And JJ. Nine, nine Emmy nominations for Letterman? Uh... Are all your answers something come out like Ed Koch? You know, I'm not because I don't. I don't. I, honestly, I don't. I don't think Ed it, Koch? It, most of them were with Letterman. Yeah, but I had a few other straggling, straggling ones. Like Leguizamo was a straggler. No, no, no. But others that I'm were sure not part of a series. Like you know, rights. specials that I've I've done in my illustrious career. So how many? I actually went in. I actually went down to my garage. You talk about garages. I keep all my. DVDs and videotapes and show net notebooks in my garage. You've been hoarded out of your so home. So I, 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 I have. The, the rest of the home is where she wants shit. But I wanted to find the more sports, my little notebook of more sports. And I open the fucking door and I'm looking at all these DVDs and I'm thinking, this is the museum of mediocrity. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm telling you I'm something. It. it was so, no, you, I couldn't find yours. So you're not, oh, you're good. spared, pal. More sports. I couldn't tight. find anything of it. It was, I think it was when I first went on, uh, used my computer for shit on a show. So I didn't have any notebooks or DVDs or anything. So I need a clean answer. How many Emmy nominations for Letterman? Uh, nine. Okay. When did you meet Sinatra? I met Sinatra a few times. Gee, the, whoa. I met Sinatra a bunch of times, actually, and, and he liked me, which was the, f- the weirdest thing in the world because the day I met him. I heard that Morton's a Jew. The day- the day I met him, I went to see, I went to Raiders, and don't ask how, I became friendly with Jilly Rizzo. How do you not ask how? how? I don't know how it happened. A, a friend of mine knew his daughter, and I just started hanging out with him. And I'd go to, I'd go to restaurants with him, and 
I used to bug him all the time. When can I meet Sinatra? In New York. In New York, yeah. And this is when you were executive producing Letterman? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is probably... You were hot shit, bro. Yeah, I was. You are. No, no. But now you're no. like a dad, which to me is hotter shit, and to the <laughs> listeners are hotter shit. But the fact that you were the guy, like... I was a lot... Lo- you know, I was the luckiest guy. I was at the right place at the right time, and I was single. Yeah. I was making decent money. You a lot of ass. I had money. a great... <laughs> Great apartment on the river. I mean, Which I had river? a house in Hudson River. I had a house in the Hamptons. You know, I mean, I I had a great life. I had a great thing going. I, my life is different and better now. But man, I had a I had a great. I had a great. The Hamptons. I was telling up. somebody yesterday. I used to get from the League of New York Theaters every month a list of all the shows that opened on Broadway. And I'd have two tickets held for me to every show. I just had to check the ones I wanted, RSVP, and I'd have two seats on the aisle, and I was a single guy. And I was, you know, I was dating and had the greatest access ever to everything. Sports, concerts. Is that because because of the Letterman show? Yeah, of course. And you just brought a lot of juice. Yeah. Oh, it was, you and everybody know. Everybody wanted to make nice in case they had somebody that they everybody wanted to Everybody wanted to get on TV. Yeah. Everybody wanted to get on TV and you know something we were we were on fire at the time. I mean, you know what, you know, how heady was it on Saturday Night Live when you walked into that building? Yeah. You know, it's pretty heady stuff. When I did Letterman, and when I'm not going to stray too far from you meeting uh Sinatra. When I did Letterman, I've done Leno 18 times and he's been he was on the podcast. He's been a great friend. And a really, and he's really great to comics, Jay. Oh yeah, always has been. Uh, but for some, Jay's getting a bum's rush. Oh yeah, believe me, Jay. But everyone talks shit about him, and it's like, you know what? You fucking do. You do a a twelve minute monologue every night, and they go, "Well, he has a staff." Okay, you sit down with the staff every day and just go through the monologue and hurt people's feelings. Like this joke, I don't like. This joke, I like. I did uh, Access Hollywood Live, and I left at 9 in the morning. Leno's car was already there. Yeah. Oh, no. And he he's... goes, oh, yeah. And then he explained to me, 11-minute monologue is 44 jokes. 44 jokes. I mean, and yeah, really, yeah he, might, not he might have writers, right. but there are comics that work on 12 minutes of material for, for a lifetime. Yeah. I mean, there are guys that, that, that still are doing like, the same hey, 12 Jay minutes Leno, they've done. Jay Leno. But you know what? They're not bad. Like Dave's monologue – is people always say, uh, and I'll speak carefully here. <laughs> people always go, it's the anti monologue. And I always go, bullshit. No writer worth his weight in salt has so little ego that he can hand in bad jokes on purpose. No writer, no, no comic could ever get up on stage and by design not get laughs. Yeah. Anti monologue, what does that mean? You're not going for laughs? Well, it's like he's mocking the monologue. I mean, Letterman was brilliant because he knew Every joke on that show, and we talked about this when we were working together, I think. He knew that every line on that show had to be a joke. To, to the extent where the whole first act of that show, the opening was usually uh, from New York, a city that with a joke. Yeah. You know? Uh, and now here's a man who... I forgot about... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember he that said, a man who's not wearing any pants, David Letterman. So, so right off the bat, the first 20 seconds of the show, two jokes. Right. Then he'd come out and he'd do five or six jokes in a monologue. So you figure by the time he goes over to the desk, he's already told ten jokes. And then you got the life vest that is the, the top, top ten, ten list, which yeah. is eleven jokes, and the category great. and the ten ten jokes. So right off the bat, that first act was forty jokes, and it's in the bank every night. In the bank every night. I mean, and and it was that well engineered by him. He was at he was by, at, you said the key by phrase. Letterman. That's by, by what do you mean by him? By Letterman. He came, who, he came up with the top ten list or did you? Top ten list was – it was interesting. The derivation of the top ten list is is subject to some debate. Uh, Steve O'Donnell was the head writer on the show. He created the top ten list. Uh, I was never given credit, but I, I've been in conversations with people who have said, I remember we were standing in the lobby at the Letterman show and it was when People Magazine was was pretty young, and it, they first came out with their first top ten. I don't even know what the fuck it was, you know, hunkiest dits, whatever it is. I don't know. So that was it. Hunky we dits. said hunky, yeah, whatever. Hunky dits. Hunky dits. And um, so we talked about, you know, we should do our own. And Steve O'Donnell said, "Yeah, let's." 
And wouldn't that's he write the first yeah, one? Sullivan Theater. That's where Conan. Oh no, this is at NBC. Yeah. At NBC on sixth floor. Thirteenth floor. Fourteenth uh, floor. Fourteenth floor yeah, was the yeah, Letterman. Yeah. The live audience show was on the. 14th floor? Oh no, 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 no. The studio was on the sixth floor. Hey, the come office. on, boy. No, no, the office was on the fourth. Yeah, I might have been born, yeah, but yeah, it wasn't yeah, no, at no, night. No, no, Wait, no, was it? No, it was. I might have been born, but it wasn't at last night. On a truck. So, tell me about when you met Sinatra. Uh, uh, oh, what I was gonna say is when I did Letterman, I was nervous the night before. Two nights before, the night before, and when I woke up, I had a knot in my stomach, and it wasn't until I sat down, and Dave, it's almost like he tried to trick me, like a pump fake in football, and I didn't, I didn't take the fake, and I, I, I gave shit right back, and then he laughed for real, and I went, oh my god, this is working, because I, he, I was telling the story about walking. But it's funny how he tests you. Yeah. And he, like, it was like his douche detector. Like if I, cause he, I go, so then we went to Lauren's office. He goes, Lauren Green? I go, yeah. And, and he knew that I knew. It, yeah. I, he knew I wasn't saying yes for real. It was me going like, yeah. And then I just went right over it. And then as I'm finishing my story, you just hear him off camera going. <laughs> oh, really? oh, that's funny. And then he just that's liked funny. it. But I was more nervous. I, I, I was like, I couldn't talk. Oh, I, I'm just what, what, you're talking at NBC or at CBS? Ed Sullivan. I mean, you CBS. walk out on that Ed Sullivan Theater stage. That's daunting. I have no idea what it looked like. Oh, I just remember Biff backstage. All that, you know is, and it's the same thing. I yeah. don't care how old you are. You go onto that stage, you look up at that balcony, and you see that rail all that all these girls girl. were hanging over and screaming. That's all I could think of was girls yeah, screaming at Beatles. That's all you could think of whenever you're and in you that theater. you know what theater. brought me to earth in the good way? Biff Henderson backstage telling me which direction to take when I walked. I just looked at him. It was like an old friend, even though we had never met. I went, Biff. He goes, Jay. That's (laughs) We never met. But I was like, oh, my God. That's that's where Biff is a great great stage manager. He goes, you're just going to walk straight out and do And I go, Biff, Jay. Biff's out of his mind, though. Of course. Biff is, you know, Biff. Fucking union stage manager. No, no, no. You know, Biff has all these crazy rituals. I mean, he goes out before the show onto the stage. And gets on his hands and knees and kisses the stage. Kisses the stage, not the kisses performer. The, kisses the stage every night. I don't know. Maybe Did he's. Did you ever kiss Paul Schaefer's head by mistake? Facing, you know, Mecca. I don't know what the hell he's doing, but he's, he's down there kissing the floor. How much of that band are, are they huge potheads? Uh, used to be. I don't, I don't know how they are now. Cause used, Paul Schaefer used just, to be, you used to walk down that hallway on the sixth floor. That's when it was on the sixth floor. Yeah. And the NBC was sixth floor. You couldn't, you couldn't, Dirty Rock. You couldn't breathe. I mean, it was the greatest fog ever. Um, Paul Schaefer is such an odd guy that I think he must be just so baked that I don't get it. Yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's part of that and part that he's Canadian. <laughs> you know, I think it's a real combination. I can't blame the pot for that. That's, you know. That's another thing. Like it's a musician. Oh, I'm not in the pot. I'm just saying that. That's the other thing, and I'll give them full credit. Is you talk about Dave and Jay and the amount of jokes, just the the factory, the the amount of jokes. Like going in and out of break every night and doing different songs with a group of guys, and then Pearl Jam comes, and then Paul did a super smart thing where their renegotiation with CBS, any band that comes on has to play with the Paul Schaefer CBS orchestra. That, no, 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 no. That, that dated like back. Like I said, that I'll tell you happen. how that happened. No, it, it did happen. No, no. When we were at NBC, it's an interesting story. Uh, when we were at NBC, Carson Productions, Johnny Carson's company, owned the show. So when we first went on the air, I wasn't the producer at the time. I was a segment producer. But they came a, a, a list of rules from the Carson people. You can't have certain acts on. Hackett was on, was one of the acts. Couldn't have Hackett on. You couldn't have Stephen Eady on. You couldn't have Rickles on. You couldn't have like, this oh, one. Oh, Stephen Eady. Car- I'm telling don't, you don't but, take but, but them from us. Carson gave a list, a list of people you couldn't have on, which forced us to put our own people on. And it made the show that much I was better. Say, that's what made the you show. Know? And he then had, you couldn't have horns in the band. Because that was Doc. Because that was Doc. You couldn't have. Uh, he couldn't do. Thing. He couldn't do an actual monologue. That's why Letterman's monologue is different. Because Carson said Johnny owns the monologue. You can't. You can't do a monologue. He could do opening remarks, and that's what we used to call him for years at NBC on the rundown. You never saw a monologue. It always said opening remarks, and that was because Carson said you, you can't do jokes. 
You know, and it was it was incredible, and it forced him to do things differently. We couldn't have full bands on. That was the Tonight Show. Your show can't have bands, which is why whenever a band came on, they played with Schaefer. The Grateful Dead is the biggest example where you go, I think there's only two guys. <laughs> like, that's not the Grateful Dead. That's Jerry and Bob I Ware. Know, I know. And it was unbelievable. Which and she's the only two guys you really like. It's the only two guys you knew. Bob Ware, really. No, what's his name? Mickey Hart. Yeah, the crazy smoking right. drummer. He just got arrested. Did for, he? For assault. I saw, I saw it in the paper. Yeah, assaulting good, his good drums. For him. <laughs> the, um, mm.